I'm still shaking. Man, it's intense, ain't it? Oh, I mean, that was close. It was 13 yards. That's close. It's funny how the world works. People come and go in your life for a reason. And for the ones that are there, it always seems like a hunting trip can bring you closer. While at the ATA in January, I bumped into a guy named Victor Grisco at the 4th Air and Winston booth. We immediately hit it off talking about camera gear and hunting. We exchanged numbers and kept in touch. While scrolling through Facebook one day, I noticed that Victor had invited me and my dad to join him and some of his friends on a bear hunt in Canada. Fast forward a couple months and we were finally packing our bags to head north. So I packed up my bow and pretty much all the fish and tackle that I had at the house with my kayak and me and dad were just anxious to get on the water and I could not wait to get in the woods. Just got done eating breakfast at the hotel. And, and dad are finishing packing uh, a few little things back into the truck, getting ready to cross the Canadian border, heading to bear camp. Long drive yesterday, but it was good, it was fun. Enjoy spending time with my dad and uh, had a good, had big long talks on the way up and looking forward to today. Ready to cross the border, find some bear, catch some fish, good father and son trip, so here we go. Bear camp. We are 15 minutes away from Canada. <laughs> this was the first big hunting trip Dad and I had been on. Once we crossed the border, I was ready to turn off the black top and hit the gravel. The road heading to camp felt longer than the 12 hour drive it had took to get to Canada. To say we were excited was an understatement. What do you think, Dad? Pretty awesome. Beautiful. Here we go after traveling for two days. We're here. We made it. Camp. Let's go kill a bear. Hey, George. It was so different being in the bush in Ontario. Instead of watching for antlers coming through the timber, I was trying to kill an animal that could potentially do the same to me. Even though black bears don't pack the punch of a grizzly, you'd be a fool to take them lightly. The bush is so much thicker than my woods in Kentucky. Some places you can barely see further than 10 yards at a time. The woods are eerily quiet at times. Moss carpet covers the forest floors. Evergreens tower around you, making you feel so small in such a large space. It's different than what I'm used to. At the same time, it may be the most beautiful place I've ever seen. Every lake looks like a Bob Ross painting, just with a lot more happy little trees. All right, first night in Canada, black bear. Me and Dad just got the tree stand set up, put out some bait, and uh, I'm just gonna sit here and wait a while. We got about four hours till, till dark. It's his first night, so maybe we can get it done. We'll see. The first evening was pretty uneventful, but man, it sure was nice to be back up in a tree. Well, the first night we didn't see a bear, so we're gonna go back, uh, check the cameras and see if the bait pile had been hit, and if it had, we'll, we might hunt that same spot tonight, and if not, we'll move on, find a different place, but we're up this morning, sun's shining, we're gonna go hit the lake and uh, see if we can catch some fish. So, me and Victor went and checked the uh, bait site that he hunted last night with the, with the guy and 
had about a 350 pound bear on it and we're going to go run some more bear bait set another camera hopefully i got one coming into my site see how it goes this is a secret mix here we can't we can't tell you the recipe sorry all right well my site didn't get hit barrel wasn't tipped over or anything we'll check the card see if we got any pictures and then we're gonna set up another camera in a different spot and put out some more bait so It'll hopefully we'll tonight. hopefully we'll have It'll a bear down tonight with an arrow with It'll an arrow he says we'll, we'll see with an arrow Second night here in Canada. We're gonna set in the same spot we sat last night. Um, the bait hadn't been hit, but there's a lot of bear in the area. So we've already got everything in place. So we thought we'd give it another go and see if we can get one of them. The only thing that we seen on the second hunt was mosquitoes. Man, there were a lot of them that evening. Good thing we had the thermos cells going the whole time. I don't think I would have made it through this hunt. While we were out earlier in the day, we ran across five bear while baiting another site. One was a giant boar, a sow, and she had three cubs with her. So hopes are high for the next day, even if we didn't get one on the second hunt. One of my favorite things about being at the camp was sitting around the fire at night, talking with all the guys about the fish we caught during the day, and if anybody's seen any bears, and just telling stories and hanging out. And that really is what trips like this are about, is just the camaraderie that you can have over a campfire and under a beautiful night sky is just crazy. Ontario is such a magical place. I can't wait to go back. Here it is, day three. From what we had seen the day before, we were excited to make a move to the new site. Victor and Brady tagged along to help me and dad get set up. We went in early around 11 a.m. to get everything in place. Victor was a huge help with the filming on this hunt, while Brady was our armed security. Knowing there was a sow in the area with three cubs, we weren't gonna take any chances. All right, we just got, a, just got another set hung up here, different spot. Uh, we come here to bait yesterday and seen a giant boar and a sow, three cubs. So set up, the barrel was hit this morning. What do you think? Looks good. I'm, I'm excited, I'm pumped. So we'll go back to camp, fish a little bit, get something to eat, and we'll be back in the tree. Walking in on the third day, I kept an arrow knocked just in case there was a bear already at the barrel. The day before, we had seen him there, and if they were already at the barrel, I might have been able to slip in and get a shot. We wanted to make sure the coast was clear, then hustled to the tree stand. Once we got settled in, we had a perfect wind to hunt that side. Dad went ahead and got in the tree stand first while I rang the dinner bell.
Okay, me and Dad are in the tree. Got the bait just a few yards away. This is a, it's kind of a cool setup we got. The hill is so steep that our tree stands are, my tree stand is two feet off the ground and Dad's is about four maybe. So we're sitting real close to the ground but we've got a good vantage point over top of the barrel. Got heavy trails coming in. The bait was hit uh, this morning. So we're hoping they come back this afternoon, see how it goes. It was a good shot. Um, it looked good. We reviewed the footage. It looked good. There's a ton of blood in the road on the rock. So we're going to go back to camp. We're going to round up a bunch of the other guys. And, uh, we got some other guys hunting tonight, so there might be more than this bear to track. But I'm really hoping that that bear went down. I've seen it run through the woods. I've seen the nocturnal sticking out of it glowing. Hopefully it went down, so uh, I don't know, just fingers crossed. Alright, let's let's roll. Let's get out of here. Is that not awesome? It's awesome. <laughs> I'm still shaking. Man, it's intense, ain't it? Oh, I mean, that was close. It was 13 yards. That's close. 
gosh, I hope that was a good shot. Right. I practice so much on trying to stay away from tucking that in that pocket like you do a whitetail. And I guess after you do it so many years, it's just like second nature, you know, that pin just floated right behind that leg and then I tried to back off and just go middle body and, oh man, I don't know. This bow hunting's tough, ain't it? <laughs> it's fun. It's oh. been a great oh, trip. I even got any left. Yeah, there's. I had, if I had a bottle of water, I'd be drinking like Dusty does after he shoots something. <laughs> Your cameraman's still shaking. <laughs> How come I can't get a cameraman that doesn't shake? <laughs> Riddle me that one. All my camera guys shake. Dusty sees a rabbit and he starts shaking. <laughs> I'm just kidding, Dusty. I love you. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I can see how that would be addicting. <laughs> Quick. I mean, that was a... Uh... Man. Hopefully it's good. I don't know. The other guys at camp, they can, they've killed a lot of bear, and they can tell us, you know, if it was... I don't see how it couldn't have killed it. I mean, that arrow went, went in pretty good. It wasn't a pass-through. Um, I probably hit... Uh, hit a bone or hit that other shoulder or something but i mean i got i got more than half of my arrow in that thing and as it runs it's going to keep it's going to keep uh doing work so we should we should be okay i mean i would i would be really really surprised if that Get your stabilizer there huh your stabilizer yeah i just I'll, I'll be really surprised if that doesn't kill it bear i mean that's uh I don't know. It's over now. That's the thing about it. You can't uh, can't take that arrow back once it's gone. It's gone. So, you know, we're, I practice and practice and shoot a lot, I'm trying to make sure that I do a good job. And you look like a good shot. I think so. Yeah. I just second guess myself. All right. Helmet on and. Let's roll, let's make some phone calls. Right, Victor and Braden, they just got back from their bear hunt and they're gonna help me and dad find this one. We're gonna take some trucks down and see if we can get on the blood trail. It's late, we're excited. Let's find yes. this bear, awesome. Let's go get it. Let's go up here it. is the armed security. <laughs> make sure no one gets hurt and everyone comes back to camp safely. Sharp shooter. <laughs> yeah. What you in there, Brandon? Yeah. What? What you carrying? A 4570. Marlin. 300 grain bullet. That ought to do the number. He's gonna lead the way in. Once everyone arrived, we took up the trail. The creek was only about 30 yards away from where the shot took place. Once the bear crossed it, though, the bush had got so thick you couldn't see further than 10 yards at times. It was my first time tracking an animal like this, and not being able to see very far had me on edge. You could cut the tension with a knife. We had six guys and one gun. Going into the bush at midnight with as many bears as they have in the area generally isn't a good idea, but we were determined to find my bear. See a paw and it ain't moving. That's how you want to go about it. I ain't got. Oh, that's a big bear, bro. I ain't got no idea. <laughs> it's well, dead. It's dead. Just go on up there and touch it. Hang on a second. Yeah. Somebody's already eaten her. Yeah, she's already been ate on, boys. Nuh uh. Yeah. <laughs>
Yeah. Seriously? Yeah. Dang it. Sorry. Wow. Oh my gosh, ate the whole leg out of it. Randy. Dang, man. That's a big bear, brother. Was. <laughs> Isn't that something? All right, well, you may cut my headlamp off. Yeah. Better? Yep. All right. Well, we filmed my bear. Um, she run a pretty good ways, but uh, looked like another bear found her. So she's uh, she's pretty well she's pretty well destroyed. The whole whole back end of her is about gone. So uh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> crazy crazy world we live in, I guess. But we got uh, we got pretty much everybody in camps with me tonight. Help me track so. Pretty awesome. Thank you, fellas. I gotta give a shout out to Randy Bolos and his two sons that came on the trip, Bridger and Brady. They were a huge help when dragging my bear out of the bush, and they were a blast to be around at camp the whole week. The bear ran about 80 yards, but the drag out was brutal. It took four men to carry him out of the woods, and the bear that had eaten him was still in the woods with us. We could hear it breaking branches in the distance as we were trying to get my bear back to the side by side. I guess he was mad that we were trying to take his dinner. We were going over rocks, dead trees, and just extremely thick timber, trying to get this thing out in the middle of the night, two o'clock in the morning. That's a good washout for him. Yeah. Wait, just say, you can get for Gosh, that's yep. a freaking pig. Finally, we got him close enough to the road that we could use the side-by-side -side to help get him up the hill. It was such a feeling of accomplishment getting that bear loaded into the bed. We done it. Traveled all the way to Canada and arrowed a black bear. Heading back to camp that night, me and dad, we had just talked and laughed and just went over every detail of the hunt and we just couldn't believe that we actually done it. Well, here we are, we got him out of the woods and uh, it was no easy task. I mean, it was, this bear is a, is a big boar and uh, man, he, he was in some brutal, brutal country. Took us probably, I don't know, two, two hours or so <laughs> to drag him out and uh, I don't know, you gain a whole new level of respect for where these animals live at by just being down in there. And I don't know, this, uh, this is a bucket list hunt for me. Me and dad wanted to come up here for years and uh, wanted to fish and, and hunt and finally just done it this year. And you know, it's, that's things, just don't wait, just go. Just go do it if you can. And I'm so happy we came and put a good arrow in this bear. Uh, Whenever we gutted him and stuff, cleaned him out, it was a single lung shot, so he, he went a little ways, but uh, I don't know, I'm, I'm happy with it. This is, a, this is a great bear, and I'm just kind of blown away by the whole experience. Kind of leaves you speechless in a way. It's just, been a trip of a lifetime. It uh, sure has been great. Adrenaline rush like you wouldn't believe. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you take two, two guys, uh, We've never hunted bear, never seen bear before this trip, and 13 yards away, this one came in, and I was just, you know, I, I told myself I was going to wait and see, let it mill around, get a lot of footage, and that just, that didn't happen at all. Um, 
first first chance we got to shoot it, we shot it. And you just got to take it, take advantage of the opportunities that you're given out here, especially with the bow. Bow hunting is crazy, crazy hard. And you know, I, I took the first opportunity that he gave me. So mm -hmm. one thing about bear camp is uh, the the guys that come with you, they just you create a bond almost instantly. I mean, it is. If it wasn't for those guys, we wouldn't have got this bear out of the woods in one piece. I mean, we'd have had to quartered it up, and I mean, it was just brutal, brutal hard work getting him out and dragging him through what we did. But um, man, I don't know. It's just it's been a good camp. Victor invited me up, and uh, I, I'm so glad that we came. One arrow later, this has turned into a fishing trip. <laughs> so we're going to get this bear cleaned up and uh, going to. Get, a, get everything squared away, I'm going to go fishing, so. Here we are. So, uh, 5 -O Media, Empty Quiver, or AKA Kentucky Thunder. Yeah, first annual Canada bear trip. Killed a big bear. <laughs> caught a lot of fish. Caught a few fish. Yeah. Like, I caught a few, Dad caught a lot. If you ever come up here to Agnes River, John did leave a few fish for you. Yeah, a couple. But I think he holds the record for how many fish were taken in one week by an individual. Got 90, 95 fish. <laughs> oh gosh, or I think 96. More than that. Victor logged in almost 50 hours in the tree stand. They had a good, had a couple encounters. Yep. Good week, we got we got a bear. We was killed lucky. a great bear. And dad, dad even stayed on, on the bear, shaking just yeah. his head. Yeah, I almost messed it up. Camera, <laughs> camera, camera man it. done good. Yep, he did good. Heading out, he leaving good. for camp, leaving camp. I'm uh, going to go down George Joyce's, pick up my bear, get the export tag, get some gas, and we're headed back to the States. USA. Here we go. Oh, Canada. <laughs> Come on, Randy. <laughs> the trip to Ontario was more than I could have ever asked for. With Father's Day coming up, it was a perfect father and son getaway. I don't take one day that I have with my dad for granted. We was able to find dad a life jacket that actually fit, so that was cool. We got to see animals that we had never seen before. Paddled some of the most beautiful rivers imaginable. It's crazy how clear the water is up in Canada. 10 feet deep looked like two feet at home. The fishing was incredible. Smallmouth bass were biting awesome, which is our favorite fish to catch. Dad got me started catching smallies in the rivers whenever I was a kid. We got to bring home a ton of bear meat. My freezer's stuffed to the top now. Lastly, I have to thank George and Joyce for having us at camp. You simply couldn't ask to meet better people. Within a day, they made us feel like family. I can't thank them enough for truly a trip of a lifetime. Until next year, Ontario, I'll see you again.